orcas or killer whales are straight up the real bosses of the ocean. While most people freak out over sharks, orcas make great whites look like rookies. These black and white torpedoes are smart, savage and built for hunting. First off, orcas aren't just big, they're massive. We're talking 30 feet long and over 10,000 pounds, heavier than a school bus. But what really makes them terrifying isn't just their size, it's their brains. These marine mammals roll in a tight-knit family crew, hunt like a pack of wolves and even teach their young the art of the kill. And their menu? Everything. Unlike sharks which mostly go solo, orcas team up and strategize their attacks like seasoned hitmen. Seals, sea lions, dolphins, sharks. Yep, they eat great whites. And even massive whales. Nothing is off limits. Some pods have mastered flipping stingrays on their backs to paralyze them, while others body slam ice flows to yeet seals into the water. And get this, they even rip open sharks just to slurp out their livers, because that's where the good stuff is. Speed, check. Power, check. Big brain energy, double check. But what if I told you that millions of years ago, the oceans were ruled by a super-sized orca on steroids, a true sea monster that made today's killers look small. This is Leviathan Melvilli. Leviathan was an absolute unit of a predator, an extinct genus of macroraptorial sperm whale, with Leviathan melvilli as its only known species. Its name takes inspiration from the biblical sea monster Leviathan, while the species name gives a nod to Herman Melville, the author of Moby Dick, who often called whales leviathans in his book. Fossils of this prehistoric heavyweight have been found in the Pisco Formation of Peru, dating back to the Tortonian stage of the Miocene Epoch, around 9.9 .9 to 8.9 million years ago. But this beast wasn't just a local menace. Isolated teeth found in Chile, Argentina, California, South Africa and Australia hint that Leviathan, or a close cousin, may have stuck around into the Pliocene about 5 million years ago and roamed across the globe. A top tier apex predator, Leviathan was part of the raptorial sperm whale crew, a group of ancient whales built for taking down big prey. Unlike today's sperm whales, which just suck in their food, Leviathan was a straight up bite and shred machine, rocking huge enamel coated teeth in both jaws, perfect for grabbing and tearing apart other whales, seals and whatever else was unlucky enough to cross its path. Size wise, it was a beast. This sea tank measured 13.5 to 17.5 meters. 44 to 47 feet long, about the size of a modern sperm whale, Physeter macrocephalus. But what really sets it apart? Its teeth, massive daggers reaching up to 36.2 centimeters, 1.19 feet, the biggest biting teeth of any known animal, not counting tusks. Another standout feature was its elongated skull basin which housed the spermaceti organ, possibly used for echolocation, communication or even ramming into prey and rivals like underwater battering ram. Back in November 2008, a partially preserved skull, along with some teeth and the lower jaw, were discovered in the coastal desert of Peru, tucked away in the sediments of the Pisco Formation, about 35 kilometers, 22 miles southwest of Ica. This epic find was made by Klaas Post, a researcher from the Natural History Museum Rotterdam in the Netherlands, who just so happened to stumble upon them on the final day of a field trip. At first, in July 2010, the discoverers gave the whale the biblical monster name Leviathan Melvilli, but here's the kicker. The name Leviathan was already taken by a mastodon genus, so in August 2010, the team decided to correct that mistake and came up with the new genus name Leviathan, which comes from the original Hebrew name for the sea monster. 
At first, the fossils were thought to be about 13 to 12 million years old, from the Cerevalian age of the Miocene, but after further analysis, they adjusted the dating to about 9.9 .9 to 8.9 .9 million years ago, from the Tortonian age of the Miocene. A bit of a time shift, but still ancient as hell. The exact body length of the Leviathan is still unknown, since only its skull has been found. However, Olivia Lambert and his team made a solid guess by comparing it to Zygo Ficetta and modern sperm whales. They focused on the relationship between the width of the skull, specifically the distance between certain parts of the skull, and body length. This was because the snout length varies in modern sperm whales, and Leviathan's snout was shorter. Based on this, they estimated Leviathan's length to be between 13.4 meters, 44 feet, and 17.5 meters, 57 feet, which is huge. The biggest estimate suggests it weighed about 57 tons, making it a giant predator. For comparison, modern sperm whales are typically 11 meters, 36 feet long for females, while some males reaching up to 20.7 meters. 68 feet. Leviathan's skull measured about 3 meters, 9.8 feet long, and like other raptorial sperm whales, it had a wide gap between the temporal fossae and zygomatic processes, suggesting it had some serious jaw power. Its snout was short, thick, and built strong, making it perfect for clamping down on prey. Unlike modern sperm whales, Leviathan's front teeth didn't meet at the tip of its snout and its upper jaw was particularly thick, especially in the middle. The snout also had a bit of a wonky shape, with the right side of the jaw curving outward and the left side curving inward. The coolest part? Leviathan had functional teeth in both jaws. No joke. The wear on these teeth suggests it would bite down hard and tear chunks of flesh from its prey. The teeth were deeply embedded, which helped hold onto its struggling prey. The lower jaw had 22 teeth, and the upper jaw had 18, with the 4th, 5th and 6th teeth on each side being the biggest. They were also designed to interlock with each other when the jaws closed, like a well-oiled machine. Each tooth socket was cylindrical and single-rooted, with the largest socket being in the upper jaw at 197mm in diameter. These bad boys were built to last, as cementum, like tooth enamel, probably kept getting added throughout their life. Talk about one gnarly predator. Leviathan was part of a group of hyperpredatory sperm whales, commonly known as microraptorial sperm whales, along with other extinct whales like Brigmophyceta, Acrophyceta, and Zygophyceta. Leviathan is from a separate lineage compared to the other raptorial sperm whales, and it's believed that its larger size and the development of its spermaceti organ evolved on its own, separate from other raptorial whales. The large teeth in this group may have evolved once from a basilosaurid-like ancestor, or they could have evolved independently in Leviathan. The big temporal fossa in the skull is thought to be an ancestral feature, inherited from a common ancestor, Interestingly, the enamel coating on the teeth of modern sperm whale fetuses, before they're coated with cementum, suggests enamel might be a deeply rooted trait. The appearance of raptorial sperm whales in the fossil record aligns with the diversification of baleen whales during the Miocene, indicating that raptorial sperm whales may have evolved specifically to prey on them. Some researchers suggest that these whales belong in the subfamily Hoplocetinae, alongside other genera like Diophorocetus, Idiorophus, Scaldocetus, and Hoplocetus, though many of these remains are too fragmented for full classification. Leviathan was an apex predator that likely played a key role in shaping Miocene marine ecosystems. With its massive, deeply rooted teeth, it probably hunted large prey near the surface, likely focusing on medium-sized baleen whales around 7 to 10 meters, 23 to 32.8 feet long. It would have also gone after sharks, seals, dolphins, and other large marine animals, filling a similar ecological role to that of the modern killer whale. Leviathan lived alongside the massive otodontid shark Otodus megalodon. 
which was also an apex predator, suggesting they may have competed for similar prey. Its hunting strategy for whales was similar to that of orcas, chasing prey until it was exhausted, then drowning it. While killer whales work in groups to take down larger whales, Leviathan, due to its size, may have been able to hunt solo. Isotopic analysis of a Leviathan tooth from Chile suggests that this individual operated south of 40 degrees latitude. However, studies of contemporary baleen whales from the same area show that Leviathan wasn't often feeding on them, meaning its diet was an exclusively large prey. It likely targeted baleen whales from higher latitudes, but had a more varied diet overall. Why did Leviathan need the spermaceti organ? The supracranial basin in Leviathan's skull suggests it had a massive spermaceti organ, a cool structure made up of oil and wax reservoirs separated by connective tissue. What exactly this organ did in Leviathan is still a bit of a mystery. Like modern sperm whales, it might have been used for biosonar, generating sounds to track down prey. It could have also been used for some serious acoustic displays, helping individuals communicate with each other. Another theory is it could have been used for acoustic stunning, blasting intense sounds to mess with prey's bodily functions. One idea is that the big forehead, thanks to the spermaceti organ, might have been used by male leviathans and modern sperm whales for headbutting during mating season, kinda like a showdown for the ladies. It also might have been used for ramming prey. There's even been reports of modern sperm whales ramming whaling vessels. Plus, the organ is way bigger in male modern sperm whales. Another theory is that the spermaceti organ helped with buoyancy control. By adjusting the wax's temperature, the whale could change its density, calling it to sink deeper or warming it to float back to the surface. Pretty wild, right? As I've mentioned before, Fossils of Leviathan melvilli have been found in Peru and Chile, with some extra-large sperm whale teeth spotted in places like California, Australia, Argentina and South Africa, hinting that Leviathan was pretty widespread. At first, scientists thought it was limited to the southern hemisphere, possibly due to the equator acting as a climatic roadblock. But the discovery of fossils in California in 2023 flipped that idea, showing that Leviathan was more of a global player. The holotype comes from the Tortonian stage of the Upper Miocene in the Pisco Formation of Peru. This formation is a gold mine for well-preserved marine fossils, including baleen whales, beaked whales, ancient dolphins, and raptorial sperm whales like Acrophyceta. Sharks, including the massive Megalodon and Cosmopolitodus, were also around, meaning Leviathan and Megalodon were the true kings of the ocean. The formation also housed sea turtles, seals, crocodile bones, and a ton of fish species, giving us a glimpse of a super diverse ecosystem. Leviathan also shows up in the Bahia Inglesa formation in Chile, which dates back to the Tosonian to Messenian 9.03 to 6.45 million years ago. Like Pisco Formation, this place has an epic collection of marine fossils, including ancient mink whales, grey whales, cetotherids, and other toothed whales. Sharks, including megalodon and carcharodon species, were cruising around alongside seabirds, penguins, and crocodiles. In Australia, fossils of sperm whales from about 5 million years ago show a super-rich marine ecosystem. This place was full of big marine animals, including sharks like Megalodon and whales like Megatera myosena and Physetodon balei. The exact cause of Leviathan's extinction isn't fully nailed down, but it's likely a mix of things. One big factor was probably the fierce competition with other apex predators like Megalodon, who also had their sights set on the same food. Big marine mammals and baleen whales. These two massive predators were likely battling it out for the same chow. Then there's environmental stuff. As the climate shifted and ecosystems changed, prey might have become harder to come by, making life tough for Leviathan. Plus, their extinction also coincides with the emergence of the orcas as well as large predatory globocephaline dolphins, possibly acting as an additional stressor to their already collapsing niche. Who would win in a battle? Megalodon or Leviathan? 
First up, size. Leviathan takes this one. We're talking 62 tons and 17.5 meters, 57 feet long, while Megalodon was around 50 tons and 20.4 meters, 67 feet. So the Meg might have been a bit longer, but Leviathan was chunkier and more massive, giving it the power advantage. In terms of speed, Leviathan's got the edge. Estimates say it could move between 8 to 32 kilometers per hour, 5 to 20 miles per hour, while Megalodon topped out around 18 kilometers per hour, 11 miles per hour. That extra burst of speed would make it tougher for the Meg to close the gap. Now, let's talk senses. Megalodon was a sensory powerhouse. It had a killer sense of smell, vision, and could detect electrical fields from prey. This made it a stealthy ambush predator. Leviathan used echolocation, which is great for finding things, but doesn't quite have the versatility of Meg's radar-like abilities. So Megalodon definitely wins here in the senses department. When it comes to combat, both creatures hit hard. Megalodon would try to sneak up and bite deep into its prey's chest, crushing organs and draining blood. Leviathan, however, was a pursuit predator. It'd chase its prey down, wear it out, and eventually drown it with its powerful bites. And Leviathan's teeth were over a foot long, way bigger than the Meg's. In this case, Leviathan's bigger, sharper teeth gave it the upper hand. As for endurance, Leviathan also wins. While Megalodon was a tough, fast killer, Leviathan can handle more damage and keep fighting. It had the stamina to outlast Megalodon in a battle of attrition, trading bites without backing down. Megalodon might land some big hits, but Leviathan's sheer size and toughness would help it absorb the punishment. In the end, Leviathan would probably win. Megalodon's stealth and sensory skills are impressive, but Leviathan's size, strength, speed, and stamina would wear it down. Of course, They'd probably trade a few kills here and there, but if I had to pick a winner, Leviathan's got the edge in this ocean battle.